I grew up in uh, South Africa, where there's a big, uh, in the wilderness of South Africa, so I've always had a kind of ecological outlook. And then I got involved in sort of social justice uh, concerns and social justice activism. Uh, but I realized that a lot of people uh, didn't understand the financial sector very much, or I didn't understand the financial sector very much, and the financial sector is a key part of what drives a lot of ecological destruction and a lot of social injustice. So I threw myself into the financial sector around 2008 or so. Uh, so I started to explore the financial sector. I actually went and worked in the financial sector um, as, as a person from an activist background. So yeah, so in, in a sense, I explored the dark side of finance. And since then, I've sort of combined my knowledge of finance with my knowledge of activism and political movements. And I try to work on what's called financial activism which is around how do you contest the power of the financial sector, how do you run campaigns on finance, how do you try to improve investment flows into more socially and environmentally positive uh, types of activities. Finance is a, is a key part of how capitalism works, essentially. It's about how do you mobilize all the sort of, how do you kickstart capitalist processes. Um, and, you know, that said, there's lots of ways you can alter elements of finance such that it could actually create more equitable distribution of wealth or better uh, sort of environmental outcomes. Actually, a lot of the stuff that I do is related to hacker culture. So uh, hacker culture is sometimes thought about as computer hacking, but what, of, what hacking often is is about thinking about how you can bend the rules of systems uh, to change the ways they behave. So for example, exploring how financial funds or banks work and then messing with those rules in certain ways to try and alter the behavior. So you know, create an activist hedge fund or uh, create an alternative currency or create something that bypasses or goes around the normal uh, financial sector. It's not a very uh, a well paid uh, type of thing. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I tend to struggle to actually earn income um, doing this kind of stuff. Um, also, it can be very, uh, you know, personally, emotionally draining if you're involved in, in campaigns that take a long time and you don't see much change happening. So a lot of activists get kind of uh, burnt out or despondent about things not changing. Um, but then, you know, on the plus side, uh, when you do see things change, it's a very, it's a very personally rewarding type of thing, and you, you're fighting for something you believe in, so it's, it gives you that energy. So a lot of the people in the alternative economy movements do believe that you can actually create forms of finance that are compatible with um, equality and, uh, you know, ecological sustainability. Um, but the existing financial sector certainly doesn't prioritize those things. So there's this question about, is it fundamentally opposed to, to democracy in some kind of way? And a large part of the sort of, let's see if you look at the Occupy movement, for example, a large part of what it was trying to do was to say, our political system has been captured by the financial industry and that the political representatives do not actually represent people, they represent the financial industry and these other industries. Um, but embedded in the Occupy movement was a belief that you could actually take back power and somehow tame the financial sector and actually make it something useful. The types of movements that I've been involved in, some of them have been trying to target the political sector, working through the traditional uh, government institutions. And lots of them still actually believe that you can actually use these institutions to create change. And certainly when you're operating on things like the financial sector, which is often transnational, operates at a huge scale, Sometimes the nation state institutions are, are the most effective ways to sort of create short term change in that system. But I think a lot of people recognize that the nation state often doesn't have, is often tied up with the interests of big corporations and this kind of stuff. So there's lots of people who, who are interested in saying, you know, can we go to a deeper level and actually make changes at um, sort of almost above and beyond or below the nation state, as it were? Um, to think about how do we change the deep structure of economic systems. But of course it's extremely hard because 
I mean, uh, again, trying to mobilize people without large-scale political structures is very difficult. Um, but in the, you know, the, his the history of the alternative economy movements is that they've often actually worked outside of nation-state structures, trying to build things locally. And um, for example, here in, in Italy, there's a, you know, Sardex and Sard Sardinia, which is a local currency system on Sardinia. I mean, that's operating at a regional scale. I mean, it, it sort of interfaces with the political system to some extent, but they're trying to create some kind of um, alternative that's not really based on the nation state per se. So there's a lot of, uh, but, but I, I personally still believe in using democratic institutions to try and create change as well. You know. Say